Hello, my name is Marion. I'm from the blog Miss Mustard Seed, and today I'm going to show how to make a slipcover for the seat of this chair. This is a chair that's in really great shape, but the light colored upholstery wasn't going to last long in my, you know, our main eating area, and it definitely didn't. It's all spotty, it's got stains on it. So I bought these chairs last fall knowing that I was going to make a slipcover for the seats and knowing I would also reupholster the back so that the seat slipcover and the back are coordinated. And um, even though this area really hasn't gotten stained, I think over the years it is going to wear. So I'm going to put a fabric on that has some pattern to it. Um, it just adds a little bit more personality and color as well because I have a lot of white going on in my home and I want to add some more um, color and pattern and texture. And this fabric here is just the way I'm going to do it. So this fabric is called Zippy and it's by P. Kaufman and the color is Lakeland. So a couple of tips when you're making a slipcover. The advantage to a slipcover is it can be removed and washed. So it's great if you're in um, a home with children or just, you know, if life happens in your house, spills and stains are going to happen. So it's nice to be able to just take off the cover, throw it in the wash, and um, put it right back on. So if you're going to be using home decor fabric for a slipcover, you want to wash it ahead of time so it doesn't shrink up in the wash when you put it in the wash. So um, this has all been washed and then I've cut out the pieces that I need. So this piece is um, obviously the, the largest piece that's meant for like to be the main seat cover. And then um, I've cut and sewed out the other pieces that I need to finish it off. And this is a really great way to get a slip cover done. I used to sort of cut the pieces and then make everything as I went along. And if I did, if I do it like this, where I'm cutting out like all the ties, I cut out all the ties for all the chairs and sew them all at the same time. And then I do all of the piping at the same time and all of the double welting at the same time. I'm able to get all of the pieces done. So then when I have time, like I have an hour, I can sit down and get the slip cover done and all of the pieces are already ready for me. So what you're gonna need is, as I said, this, this one large piece that'll cover the chair. You want it to be um, long enough to go down as far as you want it. So if you want a long slip cover, you need to have it go way down here. I just want mine to hit the bottom of the seat edge, the bottom of where the original upholstery is. So it's gonna hit about here. And then you want to have plenty of extra for seam allowance and also just to have extra in case you kind of make a mistake or something. It's good to give yourself a little bit of an allowance. Um, now this is just a square, so we're going to have to cut it and make it fit this chair shape a little bit better. And I'll show you how to do that. The other pieces that I have, I have four ties and these are inside out right now, but this is just a long strip of fabric that I have folded in half and it's inside out right now. So I folded it in half and then I sewed along one edge and then sewed an angle here um, so that there can be a point at the end of the tie. And then what I'm gonna do with each one of these is turn it right side out. It's kind of like making, did anyone ever make their own scrunchies? Were you that much of a nerd? that you made your own scrunchies back in the day. I've actually seen scrunchies come back and I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can go fully put the scrunchie in my hair again after having done that in middle school. Middle school's not very good to anybody, so I don't know if you wanna repeat the fashion you lived in <laughs> in middle school. So anyway, as you can see, I'm just kind of reaching in, pinching it, and pulling it out like that. And the reason why I have four ties is I have, or yeah, four ties. I have one for each side. So it'll tie the slipcover onto each of these back braces. There we go. Now I just have to do it three more times. Um, I've already done it 12 times for all the other chairs I've done. Okay, and then um, so that it, I get like a nice, um, sharp edge, I'm going to iron each one of these. So these are my ties and we'll use those later. I have four of those. 
And if you don't want to make your own ties, you can always use like a really nice grow grain ribbon or a cotton twill tape um, or, you know, colored ribbon. I mean, you can use really whatever you want. Um, you can even do maybe two uh, just twine ties. Just, it's like the sky's the limit. You can alter this however you want. Um, the other piece I have is, um, this is the skirt. So this is a piece of fabric that is double the perimeter of the chair. So um, I wrapped a measuring tape around the chair once, I doubled that measurement, and then I made a skirt that long. And the reason why I made it double the width is because I'm going to ruffle the skirt. So if you want to do any kind of ruffling or pleating, generally um, having a piece of fabric that's double the width of what you're covering is going to work okay. Sometimes you want it to be a little bit fuller and sometimes you don't need that much. Like if I was just putting some little pleats at the corners, then I would only need a little bit of extra fabric. I'm not super precise at this part of, you know, measuring it all out and I'm not super precise when it comes to making sure I have just the right amount for the skirt. Sometimes I have a little bit left over, sometimes I need to make a little bit more. I just use this as an estimate and for the other three chairs I worked on it came out just fine. Um, and then for this long length of fabric I left one edge unfinished because I'm going to have to um, hem it. Let's see, let me turn around. So along the back, I'm going to have to put a hem here, one here, one here, and one here so I don't have a raw edge, and because these need to wrap around this back brace, and it's going to tie on here. So I'll show it'll make sense once I show it to you. But um, I have one edge that I added a hem so that when I get started, it's already done, and the bottom edge is hemmed along. If you're using a really thin fabric, you could just fold it over and double it like that so you don't have to hem it. Um, this fabric is a little bit thicker and doubling it up would have, it would have just been way too thick, especially with doing a ruffle. So this is my skirt piece. And then the last piece that I need for the slipcover is my piping. And this is um, cotton cording that I covered with um, my fabric. And I cut the fabric on a bias, which means I cut it at an angle. When I first started sewing, I didn't do this. And the reason why I didn't is because um, I did not have a lot of money and cutting fabric at an angle really wasted a lot of fabric for me. And so I cut it straight across and it worked just fine. So if that's how you do it, that's totally fine. It'll still work. Um, the reason why cutting it on a bias works is because the grain of the fabric is a little more flexible. Um, also, you can have, um, let's see if I have a seam in here, you can have seams and the seam, as opposed to being this straight seam, it's an angled seam, so it lays much flatter. So that's the advantage to cutting it at a bias, but you don't necessarily have to. And this is the length of the perimeter of the chair. And if you'd like to know how to make custom piping, I actually have a video tutorial for that that I'll link in the down bar. So, let's get to putting all this together. So, in addition to those fabric pieces that you need, you also need some pins. Um, I use kind of these larger quilting pins, but you can use really small pins, whatever you have on hand, whatever you want to use. Um, I used to always spill my pins, and one of my readers actually bought me this magnetic uh, pin holder. It's actually for nails and screws, I think. But it's fantastic. It will change your life. It's, it's probably like five bucks or less. So if you don't have one of those, get them. And then you need a really sharp pair of scissors for cutting your fabric so you get a nice clean edge. So um, as I've already done, I've positioned my fabric where I want it. If you're using a fabric that has any kind of a geometric shape, a stripe or a check like I am, you want to look at the chair and make sure that it's straight. You don't want to do all this work and then <laughs> it's not straight. And I've had that happen before. Um, okay, the other thing that we're going to do is we want to make sure that this sort of fits onto the curves of this chair a little bit better. And right now we have this extra fabric hanging here. So I'm going to sew a little dart in right here. And I'm going to do that, like I'm going to pin everything and then I'll sew it all at one time. 
my sewing machine is upstairs, I'm downstairs, I don't want to run upstairs to do, you know, just sew these darts. So, one important thing, the fabric is, my fabric actually has, um, it doesn't have a wrong side. It looks the same on both sides because it's a woven fabric. If you're using a fabric with a right side and a wrong side, you want the right side facing the chair. When I make slip covers, I use a method called pin fitting, just like a dressmaker making a dress. And when, when they pin it onto a form, they pin it inside out, and then they sew it, and then they turn it right side out. So that's the process that I'm going to use for this one. I'm going to use pin fitting. So we make the entire slip cover inside out, and then we turn it right side out to put it on. Okay, so now that I've got this, these darts done, um, then I need to deal with these back braces here and making it so the fabric will fit around them. And this is a little bit, I've gotten myself in trouble with this before, where I get a little overzealous with the scissors. So what I've done here is I folded the fabric over, and then I'm going to just make some careful cuts leading up to those back braces. I guess that's what these are called. Do these have a technical name? I'm thinking it's called a back brace. That's just what we'll call it. Okay, so I've made some straight cuts back, and then I'm going to make a little bit of, a, um, of an angled cut, like a smaller angled cut, so that this wraps around. Let's see. Basically, you just want to cut it so it fits around this, um, the back brace piece, but it's also... You've got to leave enough for yourself to have a seam allowance. So that's kind of a key. And you don't want to cut too much, so just make slow, careful cuts until, until the fabric is laying flat, but giving you enough of a seam allowance. So you see how now that's laying flat but I do have a little bit of fabric here that's enough so that I have um, a place to pin the piping because the piping's going to run around there. Now, actually, in the back here, I kind of goofed a little bit. I did this on one other one, and then the two others I did great. But I cut this fabric at a little bit more of an angle than I wanted, but that's okay. The tie is going to hide that, so I'm not too, I don't feel like I have to cut a new piece and do it over again. Ideally, this piece is going to be a little bit straighter. You see I have all this extra fabric here. Some of the fabric that I needed here ended up over here. So if you're brand new to this, doing this sort of thing, you may want to practice with just some super cheap muslin or if you have some fabric that's been in your stash for a long time and you're never going to use it, just try using that and almost you can make yourself a template to make sure that your cuts are right before you cut your nice fabric that you're using for your chair. But this is going to be fine. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. If you've read my blog for a while, you know that um, done is better than perfect. That's, that's what I feel like. And slip covers are pretty forgiving because they're not supposed to be tightly fitted and tailored necessarily. They certainly can be, but it's okay if they're a little bit um, if they're a little bit looser, I think slip covers can be a little bit more forgiving in that way. Okay, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to pin on the piping. And I like to start from the front. And actually, I think I'm going to bring the camera in so you can see this stage a little bit better. Okay, so remember my fabric is inside out. And I'm going to hold my piping up and find the center of it. And I'm gonna start the center of it at the front center of my slip cover here. So since the fabric is inside out, I'm gonna turn the edge up, and this is my raw edge now. And then you always, when you're making slip covers, always, like if you're getting confused about what needs to go, where, and all of that, always make sure your raw edges are facing the same direction. So we have a raw edge here and a raw edge here. And I'm gonna hold that kind of pinch it where I want it, and then pin it into place. 
And then what I'm using as a guide is this double welting that's there. And I'm just going to keep pinning around like this. And where I have these corner darts right here, I'm going to go ahead and pin it. But once I start sewing, I'm going to take this pin out and or kind of take the piping off a little bit, sew the dart and then sew the piping. So if this confuses you, then um, just sew this first so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, I'm going to cut off this extra fabric because I don't need it. Okay, now this bit around the legs is probably the trickiest part. So I have cut it pretty well, but what I want to do is try to eliminate as much of this puckering and bubbling as I can. So when you're seeing that bubbling, there's too much fabric right here. It can't get close enough. So I'm going to make just a tiny little cut there and another one here. Maybe a little bit more. This is where you just need to be really careful with the scissors and patient. I have done slip covers before where I, I end up with this huge slit here and I'm, I have to start over. So, um, okay, now, so I'm going to run this piping around the leg like that, or not the leg, the back brace. And again, just kind of make, making sure that everything is coming together nicely and I'm not having any weird bubbles or puckering. And then I'm going to continue pinning it all in place. Okay, and it also helps if you cut off the excess fabric again so you can kind of see how it looks, how it's laying, if it's laying nice and flat. I need to get my scissors sharpened. These were really sharp scissors at one point. Okay, so that's pretty good. There's maybe a slight bit of bubbling, but that doesn't, it doesn't bother me too much. Okay, so I can kind of see how that's all going to fit, and that looks good to me. And the tie is going to pull these parts together. Okay, and then the last part here is, you know, what do you do with these tails? And what I've always done, and this is probably not the right way, but I've done it for like 15 years, and it always works, and it's just fine, is I just cross them like this so that the ends kind of disappear into the slipcover, and what you'll see is just these two crossing, and that's it. It'll kind of disappear into the skirt. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna cut off all my excess stuff. There we go. So, I'll finish trimming all of this, and then what I need to do is, everywhere I put pins, I need to sew. And in order to sew, if you've never sewed along a piping edge before, you do need to use um, a zipper foot on your sewing machine. And what that does is it allows your foot to ride along the edge of the piping, as opposed to having just kind of a regular foot that um, would ride on top of it. It won't really work very well. So if you don't have one, you definitely need to get a zipper foot for this project. Okay, and there you go. You can already, it's kind of a fun process because you can start to see the slipcover really take shape already. So I'm going to sew, again, everywhere there's a pin, I'm going to sew along that and then I'll bring this back to the chair to put on the ties and the skirt. Okay, I've got the slipcover 
done, have the piping sewn on. You can see how I sewed these little darts, so mm -hmm. they kind of kind of fits the front a little bit better. And what I generally do when I'm making a slip cover, oh, <laughs> I see I've got a little hole in the fabric here where some of the fabric came undone. So I'll put a little pin there and make sure I go back and get that. But that's one reason why I like to put the slip cover on. Oh, there's another one here. I must have. All right, I missed a little section here. Okay, finishing my train of thought. Um, I like to put the slip cover on throughout the process to make sure, like to check for any places where I didn't connect the piping fully, um, just to check for any mistakes and also to check the fit because it's much easier to make adjustments as you go than to um, try to make it at the end. And I have another spot here where I need to catch just a little bit more of the fabric. I have fixed my spots on, or those like problem areas on my slip cover. And now I've put it back on inside out. And I have my ties. These are all, um, they've all been turned right side out and they are ironed and ready to go on. So to put them on the slip cover, you have to remember the slip covers inside out. So the tendency is gonna be to put them like this, but then they'll be backwards. So. Again, if you always remember to have the raw edges going the same direction, then you're going to have to use the seam ripper a lot less. So I want the ties to be here and here so they can tie together around this back support. So I'm just going to put one tie here, pin it on, and the other tie here. And pin that one on. And that's it. Then I'm just going to sew those on along the raw edge of the, um, uh, what's this called? The piping. Along the raw edge of the piping here. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, and I'm gonna take the rest of this up to my sewing machine and show you how I sew on the skirt and we'll also sew these ties on. Okay, I'm up in my sewing room now and so it doesn't matter what order you sew the ties on in. So again, I'm this is a zipper foot here and as you can see when it lowers, it leaves sort of this um, left side for the piping, if that makes sense. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna take off the pin. And sew on the tie. So, there we go, see how that's sewn on? And what we're gonna do with these edges, because the skirt is, you know, I'm not going to wrap around that back support, obviously. So at the very end, we're going to fold all these under and just sew them down so we don't have these crazy raw edges sticking out. If you have a serger, even better. I do not have a serger, though. So I just have to sew the edges down. We're also, at the very end, we're going to, like once all the sewing is done, we're going to iron these and trim all of these loose threads. Okay, there we go, all the ties are on, and now we need to attach the skirt. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this hopefully so it makes sense. So this is the very back of the slip cover. This is the area that kind of tucks down under the back, and here is where the two supports go for the back of the chair. Um, so if we go this way, here's where a leg goes, and here's where a tie is. And then we're going to start attaching the skirt here, which is along the right side of the chair. So I've got my skirt piece here, and I have got this side hemmed already, and the bottom edge is also hemmed already. So 
the idea is is that it's gonna you know once it's on it'll look like this with this hemmed edge on this side but that's not how I'm gonna sew it on because we've got to sew it inside out so again as I've said and I'll say this a lot you want to make sure that the raw edges are facing the same direction so we've got the raw edge of the slip cover and the piping and the raw edge of the skirt. We wanna make sure we're sewing along the raw edge side of this piping. We don't wanna be sewing on this side or we'll hide our piping. Which trust me, I've done that before and it's a pain. Now I'm just gonna sew mine right on. Um, if you're new to this or you are someone who just needs a lot of precision, then you probably will want to pin this first and then sew it. But I've done this long enough that I just kind of know what to do. So I'm going to put my foot down. And I'm so I'm using this piping as a guide. That's why, that's why we sewed this on first. So that stays put and we can use that as a guide for our foot to run along. So I'm just pinching the fabric and then sewing over it. Okay, now just as I'm about ready to get to the end here, where one of the ties starts, um, I see that I only have a little bit left. So I want to leave enough to ruffle it and also enough to make a hem. So I'll cut it about here. And the nice thing about working with checked fabric is you have a line to follow. Okay, so I'm going to take this off of the machine for a sec and I'm going to hem the skirt so the way I'm going to do it is just fold it over once and fold it over a second time so that all of the raw edges are hidden and then I like to start on the bulky end if ever I can do that because that's what the machine is going to kind of struggle through a little bit. Okay. And now I can finish sewing this section of the skirt. One note, make sure that your slip cover doesn't get bunched under where you're sewing because then you'll end up sewing like part of the seat into the skirt, which I've had that happen as well. And you have to get the seam ripper out again. And really, if you have to use a seam ripper a lot, especially on your first few times, like don't get frustrated. That's totally normal. Just welcome to the world of sewing. We have this bit left to put a skirt on. So this is the very back of the chair. Again, this is the part that kind of tucks down under the back of the seat. Here's where one leg goes and here's where another leg goes. So make sure you kind of know where you're working before you start sewing the skirt on. I actually, with one of these, I started sewing the skirt on between two of the ties and I ended up having to take that out. So see, so you can make dozens of slip covers and still make plenty of mistakes. So I have this stretch of fabric left from the skirt and I'm going to see if that's how much I really need. I only need about double and this is almost triple so that's really way too much. It'll end up being too bulky. So I'm going to cut it off at about double. Put that in the scrap pile. I've got one hem edged uh, or one edge hemmed already and I'm going to the other one. 
So same deal as the last one. We want to make sure that the raw edges are facing the same direction. We're putting it together inside out, so we want the inside of the slip cover facing up. Um, a good way to double check your work is to kind of fold it over and see, okay, if I sew it, what's it going to look like? So this is what we want it to look like. For the part that goes around the legs, um, I'd like to make sure that this, um, all these raw edges are kind of held in a little bit better. On these edges, the skirt is going to cover all of that, so there's no danger of this flipping up. But here, these could flip up, especially around the leg, and look like some fringe happening. So I'm just going to quickly, on that spot, I'm going to fold the edges down. Make sure everything is pulled nice and tight. And on the underside, I'm just going to stitch it down. Okay, and see how that holds it down? And then I'm just going to trim all of this off. So you get the idea. We end up with an edge that's not going to show over. And on the other side, you really don't see that stitch. I mean, you do kind of see it, but because the fabric is woven and busy, it sort of disappears. So there are going to be some fabrics where this, you know, it's not going to look as good. It's not going to work as well. But for this one, it's totally fine. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other tie. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck on my foot. There we go. Okay. So now I just need to iron the slipcover and trim all the threads, and then we'll try it on. So I hope that all made sense to you. Sometimes, um, you know, slipcovers can be a little bit confusing, and it's hard to communicate exactly um, how I make them in every step. So I hope I did okay. Hope it all makes sense. And the best way that you can learn, though, is by just doing it. Um, trial and error. So I always suggest um, the nice thing about slipcover is you're not going to ruin the piece by making a slipcover for it. So I would suggest just um, using an inexpensive fabric. So if you do mess up and have to start over again, it's no big deal. A lot of my early drop cloths were made with like coverlets that I found at yard sales for five dollars or drop cloths or that sort of thing. Once I got more confident then I was willing to spend a little bit more money on fabrics. So I'm just tying these in bows here. You could also like I did some I've done some chairs before where I just put the ties in, I just kind of leave them like this. Uh, but these are a little long and I think a bow works nicer, especially to kind of hide where I cut that a little bit short. And now, admittedly, this has a little bit of a 90s vibe, like 90s country vibe, but I think because of the style of the chair and also the context of the room, like, it works okay. So, there we go. The slip cover is done. And now I'm going to get to work on the back. And for more sewing and slip cover tutorials, you can check out the upholstery section of my YouTube channel or visit my blog at MissMustardSeed.com.